ChatGPT, please explain the difference between the different team compositions in Overwatch. Highlight the strengths and weaknesses of the different styles of teams. The four main types of compositions are Poke, Rush, Dive, and Bunker. Response, certainly team composition in Overwatch can be broadly categorized into four main styles, Poke, Rush, Dive, and Bunker. Each style has its own unique strengths and weaknesses, and understanding these can greatly impact the team's success in matches. Let's delve into each composition type. Poke composition, strengths, long range pressure. Poke compositions excel at dealing damage from a distance, forcing opponents to retreat or engage under disadvantageous circumstances. Yes. Control engagement. The team can maintain a safe distance while chipping away at the enemy's health, setting up engagements on their terms. Yes. Area denial. Heroes with strong area denial abilities can control space and dictate enemy movement. Um. Kind of disagree with poke. Kind of understand that poke heroes have strong area denial abilities, uh, apart from the tank that is used in poke comp. But okay, I could get by. These two are really good. Weaknesses. Mobility. Poke compositions tend to lack mobility and can struggle against fast and aggressive team compositions. True. Direct engagement. This is correlated with mobility. When the enemy team closes in, poke compositions might struggle to fend off close range attackers. True. And vulnerable supports. Due to their positioning, supports can be targeted and eliminated by diving opponents. So, TLDR, the weakness is that if they engage up close, then they will die. This is actually a very good rundown of Poke's compositions with strengths and weaknesses. Let's see if it continues. Pretty good. Rush composition. Strengths. Overwhelming force. Rush compositions are designed to charge head-on into the enemy, overwhelming them with sheer numbers and aggression. Fast engagement. Rush teams can quickly initiate fights and capitalize on enemy disarray. Zone control. Rush compositions can seize and control space, Preventing the enemy from establishing defensive positions. True. I mean, not necessarily establishing defensive positions. I would say establishing optimal defensive positions. You can still hold some spots, but you, if you hold them, you're going to lose them. So they're going to push you back to other ones. Predictability uh, for weaknesses. Predictability. Rush, team comps, uh, rush teams can become predictable and can be countered by well-timed area denial or crowd control abilities. Well, time they get in all agreed. Crowd control abilities, yeah, you, you, can, you can predict where they are. Yeah, that's good. Vulnerability to crowd control. Rush compositions can struggle against teams that can slow or immobilize their advance. Okay, uh, right now, ChatGPT is kind of like uh, throwing this at them. Um, yes and no with this. Because usually, rush team compositions have crowd control. I would just say that probably poking them from long distance and not letting them have an engage is better than trying to crowd control them and split them away. Coordination requirements. Successful rush compositions heavily depend on teamwork and coordination. A disorganized rush can easily be picked apart. Agreed. So, so far with poke and rush, I agree with everything apart from maybe one point. Dive composition. Strength. Target isolation. Dive compositions focus on quickly eliminating high priority targets, disrupting enemy backlines or diving the enemy backlines. Dive heroes possess high mobility, allowing them to engage, disengage, and reposition ra rapidly. Dive compositions can adjust their target focus based on the enemy's lineup and positioning. Agreed. Weaknesses. Execution precision. Dive requires precise coordination and timing. Lul -lul 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 -lul. Mistimed engagements can lead to wasted efforts. High skill requirement. Dive heroes often have high skill ceilings, Winton, and successfully require mastery of their mobility and abilities. Yes. Counterplay. Teams with crowd control or burst damage can punish diving heroes when they overextend. Teams with crowd control done at the same, at the right time, or with a lot of, uh, not burst damage, but burst sustain, I would say. Like ways of denying dive rather than burst damage, because you can survive, okay, okay, let's say burst damage too, okay? But I would say that probably burst sustain is more annoying than burst damage on those heroes, because if you start doing damage to them, they can just get out. Can punish diving heroes when they overextend. Ah, uh, okay, I see you, chat GPT. Good gun down. And now, bunker compositions, strengths. I'm curious because bunker in Overwatch 2, what would you consider bunker? <laughs> bunker would be with Orisa Sigma in Overwatch 1, play behind two shields and shoot at the enemies and just stay there. Uh, probably Torbjorg, Orisa, Baptiste, Brig, pirate ship. There you go, yeah, with Bastion. Like everybody stays in one position. You're not as, you can't poke as hard. As you will with a poke comp, you can't rush and you can't dive. So that's bunker. 
So probably, I don't know, even Reinhardt, Bastion, without Lucio can count. Yeah, pretty... I would say probably Sim, Mate, or Torbjorn, with an Orisa, with a Bop, with a Brig, stuff like that. Like, Bunker would be high survivability and very hard to kill, I would say. And bring some poke, but not as much poke as poke comps. Bunker comp positions set up defensive positions that are difficult for the enemy to breach. Yes, Bunker team maintain consistent damage output, making it challenges for opponents to engage safely. Yes, because it's sustained pressure. It's not as high as the poke one, though. Area denial. Yes, Bunker comp positions control space and discourage enemy advances through allies through abilities like barriers and targets. Weaknesses. Mobility. Bunker teams can struggle when faced with high, highly mob mobile opponents who can bypass their defenses. Yes, they can get pincer maneuvered. You can go left, you can go right, you can go from above, and eventually you're going to break down their defenses. This is why playing poke against, uh, against bunker comps is preferred to playing um, not rush, rush can work, preferred to playing dive. Because if you dive, they, they might have too much mass sustain over there and too much crowd control. So yes, I agree. Uh... With this. Weaknesses of Bunker can struggle when faced with high mobile opponents can baptize their defenses. Ultimate economy. Bunker compositions often rely on ultimates for effective engagement or defense, making them vulnerable when ultimates are on cooldown. I don't see that ultimates are that important uh, for Bunker team compositions, but if you have ults in these comps, you will probably win. I think that ultimates are more valuable than in poke comps, or more valuable than in, uh, not in rush comps, in the other one, in dive comps. So I think that maybe Rush ultimates might be stronger going into this than these ones. Like, imagine Torbolt, Simwall, or Issa Walt. You can kite them pretty easily. They're good to have, but I don't think you're going to lose team fights if you don't have them. Flanking and disruption. Heroes that can disrupt or flank the bunker's formation can create chaos and break down their defenses. This is impressive. This is a good rundown in explaining the team comps. Let's see the conclusion. It's important to know that these composition styles are not rigid, and there's often overlap between them. True, successful teams adapt their composition based on the map, the opponents line up, and their own team and their own team strengths. What? This is true. Flexibility, communication, and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of different compositions are key to mastering team synergy in Overwatch. I am impressed. Literally, ChatGPT just broke down the four main types of compositions. We can go in more specific compositions like like a zombie comp with I don't know a Sombra Reaper Lucio Moira. We, we can we can go in a bunch of them. But these are I would say the four big styles of team compositions in Overwatch. Poke, you stay in the back, you spam them out, you might kill them before, and if they dive you, you probably die. Like Ash, Widow, Hanzo, Zen. Even Farah, Mercy, you know, you poke, 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 and when they're low, you go. Rush, you group up together, you take control of a corner, and then you go to the other corner. And then you go to the other corner, and then bam, 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 you like, charge, just get in them. Dive compositions, Trace is on the left side, Genji is on the right side, Winston's setting up. We ready? We ready? Okay, three, two, one, dive! No, 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 Bunker compositions are just stay over there in the back and wait for things to happen and don't overextend and you can probably win. This is how it is. Now, what I would say is probably uh, for player-wise, like how can you approach this, okay? So if you play, if you have really good aim, right? Or like you like playing from afar. Imagine that you're an archer, right? Then you, sh you would probably excel in playing poke style in compositions. Or um, even bunker compositions because they do involve some poke pre-fight. If you want to get in them, right? You want to get in them, but be very tanky and focus more on cooldowns and on like macro of the game rather than the micro aspects. Like on strategy as a whole with where your team should be and stuff. Kind of like you play StarCraft or even World of Warcraft and stuff. Then the rush team compositions are probably for you. Dive compositions are if you're very high energy, very highly skilled mechanically, and you don't want to play poke, right? Like, you, you, you go and you want to play fast. It's like you're playing Quake, for instance. You're like you're playing Apex. 
And I would say bunker compositions are a combination of all of these. You just have to be patient. I'm not joking. Bunker compositions are probably the easiest ones to play. You have to be patient and you have to punish mistakes. The thing with bunker compositions is that you're not looking for aggressive opportunities that much because you don't have as many ways of engaging and stuff. So you're waiting to punish their mistakes. So if you're more... Uh, defense oriented, like you're waiting for the enemies to do something and then you want to punish rather than you forcing stuff, then playing a bunker composition might be better uh, for you and your team. If you lose f a fight though with bunker compositions, then you will probably struggle really hard to win it, to win the next one. Because you can get poked out, they can split you with dive, they can uh, brush you in. So if you secure the point in a bunker comp and you play it smart, you can probably win. But you cannot re-engage this. I'm super impressed. So there you go. ChatGPT just explained team comps in Overwatch. Huh. Pretty good rundown of them. Hey, I'm Olaf. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe. Meow.